54 man unit, that's what we are. You're done Welcome into the show, everybody. I'm Steve Lloyd-Jones. Grand Valley's now 3-1 thanks to this win over Lake Erie College. The final score, 65-23. We're going to hear from head coach Matt Mitchell and some of the players, of course, as our special player profile this week is on offensive guard Jim Walsh. And we'll bring you behind the scenes on the Lakers in the pros in our special feature. It's all ahead as GBSU Football Weekly gets started after this. first half highlights now the storm would have the ball first Grand Valley would force a punt and then strike very quickly on offense. snap to him he'll get it away Matt Williams a spiraling kick to the near side for him returnable at the 18 straight ahead 25 30 couple defenders 35 40 up the sideline the 45 the 50 Matt Williams on his feet near the 43 and he's wrestled down there on a tremendous punt return by Matt Williams the Lakers again with very good starting field position one running back and running to the right now Marty Carter to the 40 stutter step up the sideline to the 35. Matt Williams out to the left. Two wide outs right. Bart Williams wants to throw across the middle. Matt Williams the catch. He's inside the 10 and down to around the seven yard line. Tough grab there, Greg. The first and goal. Spencer running less into the end zone. Touchdown. Kirk Spencer has the Lakers on the board again. 15 on the play clock. Okabar, his hands outstretched. Pitch pass to the right as Bilal is stuffed by Horling. Big loss. Back to the 11-yard line. Three wideouts to the left side, including Potts. Running play right. Spencer, 35, Look turns down. the corner. He's at midfield. Down the sideline, the 40, the 30, the 20. Cuts back inside to the 10, the 5. Touchdown, uh, Kirk Spencer. Touchdown. Spencer able to run it home. Bart Williams hands it off. Carter a run left side. 40, 35. Stumbles down to the 33 after he hurdled a couple of guys. Now first and 10 at the 32. Williams in the pocket throws. Deep throw right side for Matt Williams. Got him. He's got it. Touchdown. Matt Williams on the score. 32 yards. What a throw and catch from the one handoff Kirk Spencer up the middle 5 10 15 20 angling near side and out of bounds at the 27 sets up the screen to the right Spencer the catch 30 far side 35 40 and up to the 45 35 30 oh he oh, jumped wow. over a man at the 25 and out of bounds oh what a play on the snap, they'll hand it off. Spencer through the middle. Oh, He's going to score. Touchdown, Kirk Spencer. Coming up after the break, second half highlights. The Lakers are ahead 34-23 going to halftime, and they get the ball first. This is GVSU Football Weekly. We'll be right back after this. Oh my gosh, that's awesome! 
Do you like it? I love it. If you sign up for DirecTV's latest deal, prepare to be blindsided. Because they'll double your rate before you know it. And you'll find you're locked into a two-year contract that could cost you over 3,000 bucks. That's why the smart choice is Xfinity. You can see all the best action in football all season long. With no surprises, don't get blindsided by DirecTV. Call 1-800-XFINITY today. At Metro Health, we don't see patients, we see people. And when it comes to their health care, there's one thing we're all working toward, helping them feel better. Better summers, better dances, better retirements, and better roads ahead. This is what we want for every person we see every day. Better Metro Health, better all around. And welcome back. As we go to highlights now of the second half, the Lakers lead 34-23. They get the ball first on a crucial drive of the game. Another running play to Kirk. Right to left on the sweep. He gets out for a first down, 35 to the 40. Looks to his right, throws it to the flat. It's caught at the 45 to 50, and out of bounds at the 45. Looks left, throws back to a screen to the right. Jamie Potts, 35, 30, 20, down to the 10, and knocked out of bounds at the 7. First and goal, running play, Spencer, straight ahead to the goal line, touchdown. Caught by Potts, 15, 20, Opening. foot race on the sideline, the 30. On the snap, Bart Williams guns it on the slant, caught by Matt Williams, 35 to the 30. On the snap, Bart Williams hands it off. Spencer with a pass going down for Potts. It's caught! Touchdown! And he is into the end zone. With that was one of our trick plays that we had um, put in this week. Obviously, Kirk uh, threw it to me. It wasn't the greatest pass in the world, but hey, it worked out. Uh, you know, I felt kind of like an outfitter out there. The ball was floating up there for a while, and, uh, you know, I was just hoping it come down into me. Storm, keep it on the ground on the first play, and Bilal. Losing yardage, Okavar throwing to the left. Phoenix the catch. Oh, he's crushed down at the 25. Okavar throwing, and he is sacked. <laughs> Belcher, the first to hit him. Makes the handoff, keeps it himself. 45, 50, 45, 40. Ollie on the run. 30, 20, 10, 5, touchdown. On the snap, it's dropped, and the Lakers have the Lakers fumble got recovery. It's Sonny Haskins. Got that one, yeah. <laughs> Sonny Haskins inside. But the Lakers are a great overall effort today. It's a great accomplishment, a great honor to be up there with the all-time greats and the all-purpose yards. Um, but it's a team effort, and it, as long as we get the win, that's all I'm worried about. Yeah, you know, that Ferris is definitely a big emotional game. We wanted to come out, get back to, you know, the fundamentals, what we have to do to win, and we did that coming down here to Lake Erie, you know, the road, road trip and everything that's evolved. I think we did a great job handling that, had a good focus, and we came out and got the job done. It's always important to rebound after a loss. Obviously, uh, we didn't play the way we wanted to against Ferris, and to come down here at a 1 o'clock start, um, you know, in an atmosphere that, you know, definitely isn't the same as Lover Stadium, it was good for us to come out and get a win and, uh, you know, play well, uh, especially in the third quarter. Well, the Lakers put up 65 points on the day and shut out Lake Erie in the second half. We'll hear from head coach Matt Mitchell coming up after this timeout. This is GVSU Football Weekly. to be a smartphone and what if that home phone could save you money on your home and wireless bill at the same time with xfinity voice you get amazing technology like readable voicemail on your smartphone caller id on your tv and even text messaging all for a low price start saving with unlimited nationwide talk and text and switch to xfinity voice for just $19.99 a month for 12 months call 1-800-XFINITY today 
almost done. Now you can pay your bill. Manage your appointments. And check your connection status. Anytime, anywhere. Oh, so you're protesting? Okay. Introducing Xfinity My Account. Available on any device. I, I know, I know, I know, I know. Let's go. And welcome back. Well, the Lakers are now 3-1 and one with this victory over the storm. Let's get the thoughts of head coach Matt Mitchell. We didn't play great the second half. Uh, Ferris, and it's another road game, so I thought our kids did a good job uh, you know, preparing all week. We, we got up to a slow start this week, and we practiced better as the week went on. So to kind of finish the week on a high note and come out and get that that start that we wanted to, you know, we got the stop, like I said, scored twice. I thought it you know, gave us a little bit of lift of spirits after a loss and got us off to what we needed to. Non-traditional offense you're facing defensively. You know, you never know where they're going to come from. You know, you guys did a good job of getting some stops in the first half. They struck for a couple of big plays. But overall, you had an 11-point lead more than halftime. And that's what I tell our kids at halftime. It's a great point. You know, we were disappointed. I think both sides of the ball were disappointed with their expectations of how it was going to go. I said, hey, guys, we got an 11-point lead. Last two games, we've been trailing at halftime. You know, so let's have some confidence taking the field the second half. And uh, as you mentioned, uh, our nemesis, the, the first half, defense was big plays. Just way too many big plays. You know, we had a, a double move. One of our you know, a, uh, corners took his eyes off a guy that was led to a touchdown. You know, and the, now you're dealing with an offense that has been pretty prolific in this league and has got a senior quarterback and a senior tailback. So we knew there were going to be challenges heading in, but we're still disappointed on we didn't make them earn it. You know, we just gave up way too many big plays for touchdowns. You guys struggled in the third quarter, <clears throat> but you're going to get the ball. You move right down the field and score, seven play, 72 yard drive. It had to be kind of, a, a, you know, a weight lift off his shoulders. Yeah, you know, our quarterback hasn't been real good in the third quarter, and I felt like he was really doing a good job in the third quarter managing our team. And uh, we made some adjustments. They're really playing us a little bit more to the field. And so, uh, you know, we hit Jamie Potts in the boundary on some screen passes and hit, hit some really big passes into the boundary and, um, you know, kind of opened some things up uh, in there. So that was a really huge series for us. It also took a lot of pressure off our defense. For our offense to go down and get that lead, it's just like you're defensively. Now you're playing with a three-score lead, not a two-score lead. And it just takes a little bit of pressure off the defensive staff and players. Defensively, you get back-to-back -back, fourth down stops inside your own 30-yard line. Again, and the offense came back and eventually scored, but you had to feel good about where you were defensively. Yeah, you know, I think the thing that we haven't been real good on, even though we got the win at ODU, and uh, definitely gets Ferris, even though against Southwest Baptist, our red zone defense haven't been where they liked it. And our defensive staff really challenged our guys. And uh, that was one thing when they got down there, we were able to get some stops, you know, and feel, either force them to field goal attempts or fourth down, they were chasing it. We got off the field on some fourth down. So uh, that was really key. I think hopefully give us a little confidence. We gave up some yardage today, um, you know, but when it really counted in the second half, we didn't give up any points and we were really good in the red zone when it counted. For three turnovers in the second half, you have a pick six, scored defensively. And offensively, came some big plays in the second half. So it was really a group effort there in the second half. Yeah, I thought, like I said, we played good team football. Special teams was good. You know, we swung some field position in our advantage. Uh, the turnovers are the huge stat. We had zero turnovers uh, forced in the first half. We had three in the second half, including scoring on defense, which was just huge for us. And, uh, you know, we didn't turn the ball over today, I don't think. We didn't have a fumble or a pick. So for us to go plus three again, we talked a lot about that. That's why that, you know, it went from, you know, being a two-score game to basically being like a five-score game. It was the turnovers, not giving up big plays, a lot of the stuff that we talk about a lot. Chris Spencer, big game. Um, moved up the charts in the career rushing, all-purpose yardage. But uh, he had uh, 17 carries, 19 carries, 164 yards. Good production on the Yeah, you know, it was uh, good to you know, We're leaning on Kirk a lot just because of where we're at. So we really leaned on him. When he started wearing down a little bit, I was glad we had Martavius Carter back. I thought he came in and hit some runs, was a change of pace. And then, you know, Ben Hutchins was injured last year, really hasn't had a ton of opportunity. Ben gets his opportunities, you know, Jalen Bryant. And then, you know, we kind of have a running quarterback at the end there, Ali Jami. He's doing a good job kind of running. He runs for a touchdown, too. So uh, it was good to uh, get Marty back, I think, against these tight contests coming down the road here in Gliak to have a one two punch with uh, Kirk Spence or Marty Carter will be good. Hopefully we can get Terrell back healthy. He didn't play today. Uh, but I was also really happy to get some of these other backs kind of involved too and just get their feet wet because we're going to need them moving forward. Really took some pressure off Bart by getting that running game going, which is something you wanted to do. Yeah, we were, we had, you know, Bart was under a lot of pressure the last two weeks. You know, we got to 
run the ball better. Obviously, we ran the ball a lot better today. Now, we should have, given the front that we were going against. And I'll be interesting. I think a couple times protection broke down a little bit, and he had to scramble. But I also felt like there was uh, you know, some cleaner pockets for him to deliver some balls. You know, Bean on that first touchdown pass there. Matt Williams had a nice touchdown pass. I think we did a good job, too, mixing in some screens. You know, we threw a screen to Spencer Field. We had screen to Potts in the boundary. Those are some of the things that you know, we talked with our offensive staff. We got to allow the kid to get the ball out of his hands. We threw some slants today. Did some other things to get Bart a little bit more comfortable. And uh, I think, you know, statistically, even though we weren't going against a great, a great defense, I just felt schematically it was flowing better than maybe it had in the past because we just took a little more pressure off him. I'd have to go back and look, but it really felt like on the sideline we were way better in third down defense in the second half than we were the first. I thought we gave up a bunch of third downs in the first half. We got off the field in the second half and got the ball back to our offense, which was key. Yeah, I mean, it's hard. Uh, it's hard to travel. We've had two road games here in Ohio. And uh, for us to be 2-0 and on the road is really key. And we just talked all week. We've got we to keep getting better. And this is what this, the theme of this team is. We get better week to week. Uh, by getting this win, it puts us to 3-1. and one. Everything's still in front of us. Uh, but we can't look too far forward. We've got to get better on Tuesday. I'm just concerned about Grand Valley football here Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And we've got to you know, have a winning record at home. That's something we talk about, too. So to get back against Hillsdale here on Family Day with an attempt to go 2-1 and one at home and 4-1 and one overall, I mean, that's, this is going to be a big week for us. He's a very important part of the Laker offensive line. Senior guard Jim Walsh is our player profile. That's up next as GVSU Football Weekly continues after this. Metro Health, we don't see patients, we see people. And when it comes to their health care, there's one thing we're all working toward, helping them feel better. Better summers, better dances, better retirements, and better roads ahead. This is what we want for every person we see every day. Better. Metro Health. Better all around. You learn something every single day at Grand Valley State University about who you are and who you can become, about where you've been and where you're going, about your goals and how to accomplish them. At the end of the day, you know what you want from life. Find it within yourself. Find it within Grand Valley State University. We accomplished our goal. We down here got the win. Obviously put us to two and one, three and one overall. Got Hillsdale. We got to keep building. Just keep going. And welcome back. Jim Walsh is the self-proclaimed leader of the Hogs up front for Grand Valley. He's the subject of our player profile as we take a look. I mean, the whole thing's gone by in a blinker and I. Feels like yesterday, you know, sitting in the back of the meeting room trying not to fall asleep and hoping I don't get yelled at. Now it's like sitting up at the front of the room, got to give senior speech and all that. It's going crazy. Senior Jim Walsh has enjoyed his time as a member of the GVSU football team. The atmosphere is something he has really enjoyed. It's a def definitely a different environment than you can find anywhere else in the locker room and meetings and bleeding and sweating with these guys. is. You create a different bond than you find in like a workplace or in the classroom. One dynamic he enjoys is a weekly tradition with the offensive linemen. Wednesday nights, online, online dinners, you know, we, we all get together, watch some film, go down to Applebee's and tear it up. And it's just a blast, just great friendship and never really get that ever again. Walsh is also a funny guy with many fun moments. You know, I. I grew my hair out and uh, first time away from away from home, grew my hair out. It looked terrible. Uh, I asked my roommate to give me a haircut and he said he would as long as he could cut it however he wanted. So he cut into a mullet and it was awesome. 
Walsh is also a proud member of the Hogs. You know, when I first came here, I was a little bit lost and didn't really know how to interact with my fellow offensive linemen as efficiently as I should. And you know, they take you in as part of the Hogs, do a hit, which I'm not liberty to discuss. And just kind of the camaraderie, when you see all of those Hogs band together and bring in a new hog, a piglet, if you will. It, it's amazing. It's set a foundation for my life moving forward. Every night, as long as the gate's open, after meetings, we uh, take a ride down Hog Hill. And when we do the initiation, the existing hogs ride and the new piglets ride behind because they're not worthy of riding with us yet. All humor aside, Jim Walsh is also a leader on the team. I've always just kind of been a bit more vocal, and you know, I don't, if I see someone doing something that I don't think is right, I'm not one to hold back. I'm gonna tell them, you know, that's not how we do things here. And since I've just kind of done that, I, I think people respect that. For today's Laker Lightning Round, we have sophomore wide receiver Brandon Bean. Brandon, you ready for this? Let's do it. Okay, player on the team most like you? Matt Judon. Favorite part of camp? Practice. First car you ever drove? Honda, 2006 Honda Accord. Do you have a celebrity crush, and if so, who is it? Oh, still Beyonce, finest woman in the world. Best dancer on the team? Matt Judon. <laughs> Favorite movie? Pulp Fiction. Best singer on the team? Uh, pass. <laughs> Your favorite breakfast meal and what does it entail? Pancakes with a side of bacon and a side of sausage and another side of bacon. Do you get up early or sleep in? I get up early. Favorite thing to do outside of football? Play video games. <laughs> Best nickname on the team and who has it? Uh... uh Pass. <laughs> One thing you always hear from Coach Mitchell during practice. Run. <laughs> I don't know. Best comedian on the team. Hey, Matt Judon. Funniest thing that has happened during practice so far this year. Uh, uh, Marty Carter, he uh, cut through his entire cleat. I don't know how. Hardest hitter on the team. Uh... I say I got hit by a tally, David Tally. Favorite TV show? PTI, Pardon Interruption on ESPN. Best dresser on the team? Brandon Bean. Worst dresser on the team? <laughs> uh, Terrell Dorsey. Favorite food? Breakfast, anything breakfast. Best moment at GV so far? Best moment at GV? Uh, beating ODU. Best part about playing football at Grand Valley State? Just coming out of Lubber Stadium at 7 o'clock. And that's Brandon Bean, this week's Laker Lightning Round. Thanks, Brandon. Coming up next, we'll take a look at how the Lakers are doing in the pros. That's up next as GVSU Football Weekly returns in a moment. Nice to meet you guys. I have these two laptops. We're gonna each download a TV show. I'm gonna download it on Xfinity, and you guys are gonna download it with AT&T UVerse, and we're gonna see who goes faster. Go. Well, this is a no-brainer so far. How's AT&T doing? Struggling. I'm ready to go. We'll wait for you guys. Looks like we're gonna be waiting for a while. Don't let UVerse slow you down. Upgrade to an Xfinity X1 triple play from Comcast and save when you bundle. See for yourself. Call 1-800-XFINITY or visit Comcast.com today. At Metro Health, we don't see patients, we see people. 
And when it comes to their health care, there's one thing we're all working toward, helping them feel better. Better summers, better dances, better retirements, and better roads ahead. This is what we want for every person we see every day. Better Metro Health. Better all around. Uh, we, we feel pretty good about our offense right now. Um, just w seeing it being executed is just big for, uh, for just every, everyone to see and, you know, go out and carry his confidence into next week. Welcome back here on GVSU Football Weekly. I'm Steve Lloyd-Jones. How are the Lakers doing in the pros right now? Mark Washburn has an update for us in this week's special feature. Grand Valley State has been the pinnacle of Division II football for many years. With the success, this program has won four national championships and had many players who were highly touted. We'll start off with wide receiver Charles Johnson. Johnson played for the Lakers in 2011 and 2012. In his two years with GVSU, Johnson had 2,229 receiving yards and 31 touchdowns. After his all GLIAC seasons and incredible 4.39 40-yard dash, Johnson was drafted by the Green Bay Packers in the seventh round. After spending time with the Packers and Browns in the NFL, Johnson was signed by the Minnesota Vikings. In the 2014 season, Johnson was the Vikings' third leading receiver with 31 catches for 475 yards and two touchdowns. Next up is Tim Lolito, an offensive lineman who is currently playing in the NFL for the New Orleans Saints. Lolito finished his career with the Lakers in 2012 and was eventually signed by the Saints as an undrafted free agent in 2013. Lolito made his first start in the third game of his rookie season at right guard. Then, in 2014, Lolito played center for the Saints and Drew Brees. So far in the 2015 season, Lolito has started all three games for the Saints at guard. Brandon Carr has been in the league since 2008, being drafted by the Kansas City Chiefs. Carr was a pivotal member of the Lakers' secondary, helping them to a few national championships while making a name for himself as a cornerback. After starting his career in Kansas City, he signed with the Dallas Cowboys for five years and $50 million. Prior to the 2015 season, Carr had recorded 420 tackles while intercepting 14 passes, returning two for touchdowns. He remains a starter in the Cowboys' secondary. Dan Scuda was a dominant defensive force for the Lakers for many years, finishing his career at GVSU in 2008. Undrafted yet still coveted, Scuda signed with the Cincinnati Bengals in 2009. After four seasons with the Bengals, Scuda signed with the San Francisco 49ers. Scuda has recorded 151 tackles, 6.5 sacks, and 5 forced fumbles in his career. Scuda is currently a linebacker for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Josh Burke played for GVSU from 2000 until 2005. In 05, he was named GLIAC Offensive Lineman of the Year and First Team All GLIAC. Burke was signed by the Green Bay Packers as an undrafted free agent in 2006, but was released before ever playing a game. Burke then signed with the Montreal Alouettes of the Canadian Football League, where he is still a member of their team. Burke is a two-time CFL All-Star. Well, that'll do it for us today from Lake Erie College as Grand Valley is now 3-1 thanks to this win over the storm. Next week, the Lakers are at home against the Chargers of Hillsdale. We'll bring you highlights of that, plus give you the reactions of head coach Matt Mitchell and some of the players. I'm Steve Lloyd-Jones. Thanks for watching GVSU Football Weekly. Have a great week, everybody. What if a home phone could also be a smartphone? And what if that home phone could save you money on your home and wireless bill at the same time? With Xfinity Voice, you get amazing technology like readable voicemail on your smartphone, caller ID on your TV, and even text messaging, all for a low price. Start saving with unlimited nationwide talk and text and switch to Xfinity Voice for just $19.99 a month for 12 months. Call 1-800-XFINITY today. Almost done. Now you can pay your bill. Manage your appointments. And check your connection status. Anytime, anywhere.
Oh, so you're protesting? Okay. Introducing Xfinity My Account. Available on any device.